All right, guys, today I'm going to show you how to service a non-serviceable loop. Uh, now, due to the fact that they have to put liquid in here somewhere, it is possible to service these. Uh, so we'll go through a few steps. Now, just to let you know, I have removed the radiator off of it, just so that it'll be easier to handle. Also, in a, another video, I will be showing how to make a custom loop out of the radiator. Uh, but we're going to open it up and go over how to service it. Uh, now it's recommended to service every year, so can't really do that on an AIO, so we'll show you how to do it. Uh, now just make sure you get a good quality screwdriver for these screws. They are kind of square and very easy to strip out, so you'll need a lot of pressure and a lot of patience. Push very hard and twist. Also, once you take this off, uh, it will leak fluid out. So make sure you don't do this inside the case. All right. And once the last screw is out, you'll need to pry this off. And as you can see, there's some water left in it. And you can see how dirty that is. All the dirt and grime on it. I actually just flushed this radiator prior to doing this uh, with a separate pump. So you can see all the stuff that got flushed out of the radiator. Um, now normally when you take this off, I have taken this off before, uh, this rubber piece here will come out with it. So basically this will be mounted right on top of that and it'll be stuck there. So you will have to peel this off. Don't worry, it'll still seal once you peel it off. And you can note by these little indentations here, here, and here, they'll match up with the indentations here, here, and here, so you won't put these on incorrectly. Um, also, that matches up with the pump itself with an indentation here, here, and here. Um, as you can see here, this is where the pump would be. Um, the pump usually sits right here. I have removed it for right now. And if you notice, the highest point of this that holds liquid is right here. Uh, that is actually the fill port for this unit. So you have one hose here, one hose here, the motor, and a fill port. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to try and clean this off with a little bit of toothpaste. Um, I have never cleaned a uh, cooler with toothpaste, um, so we'll give it a try. I'm using the Crest Whitening with Scope. I make it nice and fresh. Looks like it's actually coming off pretty well. Uh, give me a moment and I'll go wash it off. And I'll be right back. All right, as you can see, a lot of the particles came off it with the first run, but it's still got a good amount of black to it. So we'll keep going. All right, that looks a hundred times better. All right, so let's put it back together. I want to fill this up with your water. Um, make sure you use uh, something with uh, distilled water. Um, that's an easy thing to get at the grocery store and some kind of coolant or something to put in there. Um, I have, for example, the, I have this EK cryo fuel. Um, this is colored. Uh, this is going to be for a different build that I'll show you guys later. Uh, it's a solid fluid, but you won't need to do anything color related because it will be closed looped. You won't be able to see it anyways. So you can just get some cheap, like $2 uh, additives to put in there and that should keep everything from corroding, especially because this is a copper piece and the radiator is aluminum. So that is a mixed metal system, so you will need something to prevent corrosion. Uh, so what you'll do is you'll just pour everything directly into tube one or two, either one, whichever one you wanna pour it into. Uh, work it make, it, make sure you keep it elevated above the radiator so that it does not um, get any air in it. Maybe shake the radiator around. You also, when you're doing this, you wanna just you know, make sure that there's no no bubbling. Keep this face up the whole time. 
Uh, once this is entirely filled, you want to put your gasket back on, like so. Uh, overfilling it will be fine, uh, the, because the more you overfill it, the less likely you are to get air in it. Uh, then you can put the cap back on it, and we'll put these screws back in. I'm just going to put a couple screws in here just to show. Now also, if your pump starts to become very loud and you want to just add some fluid in it because these will absorb liquid into them and it will take on air. Uh, so if you want to just add liquid in it, you can take these four screws out, one here, 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 and here, and just add liquid to it through that fill port that I was showing you. Uh, sorry for the camera adjustments. Autofocus is a bitch. All right, and once you take those out, this will slide back. Make sure, like so. And you'll have this foam piece in here. Make sure you clear the piece right here that where the uh, USB goes in, and then you're left with the circuit board. Now, we'll slide that out of the way. This circuit board just pulls a little up, like so. It hinges like this to get it out of your way. This bottom circuit board, never remove this bottom circuit board. It is where the motor is soldered. You can see a solder joint right there. So once you remove this, it will break your motor and you will not be able to use the pump ever again. Now, as you can see, there is a screw right here and that is the highest point on the loop. So if you were to angle it flat, leave the radiator as low as possible. So you wanna like dangle the radiator off of a, an item leave this right up here. You can actually turn the pump on and bleed some air out of it just by using this right here. Um, and then if you get a little bit of air coming out of it, you actually would just wanna take this off here. Uh, if fluid is coming out of there, then it's probably full. Uh, you might wanna take a rag or something and put it there to catch the fluid. But as long as you keep that hole at the highest point and there is actually in fact air in the lines, there should be nothing coming out of that unless there's air trapped in the radiator. So what you'll need is a small fill bottle. You can get those easily off the line from EK or uh, Amazon, anywhere like that. And you can just spray uh, liquid right in there. Now, what you wanna do is prime that spray bottle so that liquid goes all the way to the tip before inserting in there because if you don't, you'll be just injecting air directly into the uh, cooler. So then you can do that, you can plug it, close it back up, make sure this is tight because if it is not, it will leak from here. And in this state right here, you can go ahead and plug it in and turn it on. Let it run for a little bit, make sure this is all dry though. Uh, do not run this with this having liquid on it. And that's why you need a nice rag or paper towel to catch any liquid. Um, if liquid does get on this, then you will need to let it dry before you turn it on. Uh, you can turn it on, you can let it run. You should be able to hear the water, uh, the air. So if you hear any air in this system, make sure you uh, let it run a little bit, move it all around, try and burp it, things like that, and then shut it off and release some air. Uh, that little pocket is going to act as your reservoir. So you wanna keep doing that until you have all the air out of it. Um, not the ideal situation, but it is possible to fill from there and you should be able to get your cooler up and running again. This is just one part of a few videos that I will be doing. Um, so if you would like to subscribe, uh, stay on the lookout for my videos because I am going to be doing some really crazy things with this AIO. Um, because the pump is dead, I'm going to be using it as the, the water block for a build, um, and I'm going to custom build a loop using it um, and it should turn out pretty cool. Uh, and that will be step one of a couple builds. Once you are done filling it, you can put that board back there. This slides right back on and you just have to make sure that you push hard enough to line up that USB. Once you do that, and these cables will just drape down so you don't have to worry about 
them getting in the way or anything. They just literally come down off the side. Just put the four screws back on and then you're ready to go. Uh, make sure you run it uh, a little bit so you can make sure that there are no leaks and nothing, nothing damaged. If you have any questions or concerns about anything uh, AIO related or cooling related, uh, comment down below. Um, I will respond to you and please subscribe. I'm trying to get this new channel going. Um, we're going to do some cool things. I also have a automotive build going. That's going to be completely um, automotive related. Um, as they would say, uh, hot boy. It's going to have nitrous, LEDs, the whole nine yards. So uh, stay tuned for that.